chooses to become my enemy, I will fight like I always have. Oh, Shadow! Ah, oh, anyways, let's watch the Shadow video. The Hedgehog. I've had a lot of fun okay. memories with the character over my time of being a Sonic fan. From playing rock, paper, scissors with friends to see who could be Shadow during Sonic Tag during recess, to secretly bringing my Shadow Super Poser to school without my parents knowing. Let's keep that between me and you, they still don't know about that. Crying during okay. death in Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> Spoilers. I've just always liked Shadow, from his cool design to his monotone voice. Discovering the secret of my past will be nearly impossible. Yes, sir! <laughs> What? Oh shoot, I fell asleep. I'm sorry, his voice is so fing boring. He's been one of my favorite Sonic characters, but why? Simple answer, I have a lot of nostalgia for Shadow. And a lot mm -hmm. of my favorite memories of that character, aside from personal ones that I made myself, were from 2001, the year yep. before I was even born. Mm. I wanted to figure out why I liked Shadow so much, so I did some research. I checked out a bunch of different media with Shadow the Hedgehog Sonic X. from 2001 until 2019. I just needed to find a genuine reason for liking Shadow. And upon doing that research, I've discovered that Shadow the Hedgehog has become completely and utterly assassinated by the current writing and depiction of his character in modern Sonic the Hedgehog. True! Movie. How do you become almost the best Sonic the Hedgehog character of all time and then devolve into a misused, undeveloped shell of what you used to be? Facts! Well, we're going to be taking a deep look into why the character we once knew as Shadow the Hedgehog is in fact dead. Uh! After the anyway. success of Sonic Adventure in 1999, Sega went right to work on Sonic Adventure 2. From the beginning, they wanted yeah, to Sonic X is kind of goaded. They wanted a character that could challenge. Sonic yeah, I do want to say so Sonic games. X is kind of goaded. It's the best show, better than Boom, the Boom TV show. I wish they eh, they can't bring it back really, but yeah, I definitely want to rewatch it though. Mirrors Sonic and is very much like Sonic, but personality-wise and backstory, he's nothing like him. From there, Shadow the Hedgehog was born, but he went through many different. Oh, oh we gotta look through these designs, these initial designs for Shadow. Shadow okay. The Hedgehog, somebody who mirrors Sonic and is very much like Sonic, but personality-wise and backstory, he's nothing like him. From there, could we have done this? Let's rank the let's let's give each of these a rating out of 10. All right, so what about this one first? I'm not going to lie, this one does not look like the worst one. I like I like the scarf. I like the scarf. The scarf looks pretty nice. I'll give this one a 7. Yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh got to lower it a bit. 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10. Because it looks too close to uh, Sonic. They definitely needed... They definitely did well by changing the quill design of uh, Shadow. But yeah, I don't know. And then this one, he looks a little... Uh, I don't know. The contrast between the red and the black is a little too obvious and jarring. I felt like this was a bit more subtle. And I don't like the eyes. Like, they, those look like glasses or something. So, yeah. I also like the gray and the red. So, that was good. Shadow the Hedgehog Let's see the born, others. Oh, by the way, I give this like a 5 out of 10. He went through many different variations. These are kind of worse. These are kind of worse. This looks like Storm and Silver had a baby. And this looks like... Storm and Metal Sonic had a baby. I'm not sure how this that would be possible since Metal Sonic's a robot, but yeah, that's the vibes I'm getting from each of these guys. I give each of them like a four or below, maybe. Yikes! Glad I'm glad Shadow's design is the way it is. His original name was actually uh, Teros Tyrios. Tyrios. I don't know if that would have stuck. Like Shadow did. Let me see. Cheerios. Cheerios. Like Cheerios. Okay, so Shadow's name would have been Cheerios. Okay. Which translates to reflection of. Very, ah. very subtle there, Sonic Team. Yes, sir. For Sonic Cheerios. Left Shadow very much and it doesn't really roll off the tongue like Shadow does, you know? Cheerios. I'm Terios the Hedgehog! Could you just imagine? I don't know, that would have been interesting. Too much about but I'm glad we have Shadow. 
but once when the game released, not only did Shadow the Hedgehog become a fan favorite character, but he became one of the greatest Sonic the Hedgehog characters of Ever. all time. Not Ever. only being so cool looking and having the coolest abilities, but also having the backstory and purpose that no other Sonic character had before. Your first introduction to Shadow, you're just as in the dark as Sonic is, confused in what's going on, somebody who looks just like Sonic, but it isn't Sonic, clearly. The display of new abilities, it's our first introduction to Chaos Control. Sonic's always been that cool character, and having somebody come along that might be cooler than him was very interesting. That's really what this scene set up. It didn't give us any of the deep backstory yet. It was just Facts. a showcase in Cool Against Cooler. An ego battle with- I'm the coolest! <laughs> <laughs> Be well. Throughout the hero's story, Shadow there it and is, the scene. have a rivalry. You don't know too much about Shadow. As the story goes on, Shadow... I love how you just learn more and more about him as the story goes on, man. It's, it's amazing. Respect for Sonic, with Shadow being and Sonic was a stronger one the whole time. The ultimate life form... Sonic Naruto Sasuke vibes. That, and it's hard to not be impressed. But once when you reach the dark story, everything comes full circle and you finally understand who this character really is. Shadow the Hedgehog believes that he was put on this earth and his purpose is to avenge the death of Maria Robotnik, Shadow's best friend and somebody that he had a relationship with who was murdered on the space colony arc where Shadow the Hedgehog was created. As we all know by now, Shadow mistakes Maria's words for revenge yep. instead of helping humanity you misinterpreted shadow not only has this anger for humanity but he also has this anger with himself for not being able to protect and save maria's life throughout the story <laughs> i'm the coolest is probably the corniest shadow line you gotta remember it was 2001 back then you go up to some people and say i'm the coolest they probably would have thought you were the coolest nowadays you go up to a group of people and say, I'm the coolest. They're laughing at you. Different times, you know. I wonder what it would have been like to be like in high school in the 2000s. Shadow doesn't cause meaningless violence. Ooh. Throughout the game, he's actually relatively calm and collected. Simply True. Simply going by the plan that Eggman talks about. But then, in the last story, Shadow the Hedgehog has a conversation with Amy. Everybody needs help. Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, everybody needs help in order to save the world. In yes. order to feel like she contributed towards something, she tries to make Shadow do the right thing. Begging for his help pleading for him to save she Amy. needed it and thanks to her one thing that could have made it better was like have amy be a little more emotional in that scene like the stakes are really high like almost getting her to cry or almost mimicking the words of maria he remembers his true reason for being who he is giving humanity the opportunity to be who they are yep live their dreams and be happy that's the reason shadow the hedgehog is here and in that moment shadow sheds a tear remembering his best <laughs> that fake behind tear but hey he's also feeling this guilt animation back in the day what she wanted of him and from there shadow the hedgehog sets off to do what he was supposed to do in the final minutes of the game shadow hears the voice of maria reminding him of his true purpose using up all of his energy he defeats the bio lizard alongside sonic but it causes the death of shadow the <laughs> his true purpose in saving humanity it's a beautiful moment and is without a doubt the greatest sonic the hedgehog story facts the greatest ending to a sonic the hedgehog story ever shadow the hedgehog would go down as an icon one of the greatest sonic the hedgehog characters ever because of his amazing character arc you facts felt for shadow you rooted for shadow not only facts. because he was just a cool looking character and you wanted to like him but because he was just a great character overall shadow died here and it should have remained that way yeah it was a perfect i admit it and there was no need to continue it but takashi Yuzuka, my man he brought him back because he was disappointed in the death of shadow he was disappointed in Shadow's death. How Why? are you disappointed in one of the greatest character arcs in all of Sonic the Hedgehog? Yeah, that was like the perfect ending. What does he mean, disappointed? History. At this time, Sega and Sonic Team fed back into a lot of Sonic the Hedgehog fan feedback by answering their wishes, and one of them was to bring Shadow back because he obviously became a fan favorite. So in the next game, Sonic Heroes, he returned. Now, I am actually not... I wish he returned as like... J maybe like you unlock him at the end as a playable character in the different stages not like as a part of the plot i think that would have been be the better way to go about it uh, and then just keep him as a character like that to show up in the spin-offs and stuff because that's the thing i 
while I think his storyline should have ended in SA2, I would have liked to see him as a playable character in, like, the spinoffs and stuff. So, yeah, that's the only thing I would say. Object ...to how they handled Shadow's return. Do so they still want to play as him, return? you know? Yes. Do I like how they handled it? I actually do, even though there is a Shadow character arc further down the line that I think handles it way better. Now, I'm not the biggest oh, fan 06. of the storyline. I think they're very cheap in terms of storytelling. Yeah, I think I think Speed, Speed Supersonic likes Sonic 06 a lot. Something tells me. Sonic Team always messes up their best character with making them die or uh, making the plot to where they can't come back. Yeah, they run themselves into holes and stuff. Like, 06, I felt like ran themselves into a lot of holes, so they just had to Thanos click the whole thing at the end. There are much better ways to handle stuff like this. It would have been way better off if he stayed dead, yeah. But I guess to getting knocked down from the Space Colony arc to Earth, I get, I, yeah, maybe you might experience amnesia. Throughout the game, Shadow does this internal monologue of if he is real, who is he? Trying to find this understanding of his purpose and place in this universe and world. And of course, having the support of Rouge and 123 Omega, finding alongside him and just being friends. You don't really see Shadow with friends, and this was our first time really experiencing that. True. At the end of the game, Shadow's arc becomes, I don't know who I am, but it doesn't matter because I am who I say I am, and I am the ultimate life form. Shadow the Hedgehog's character is very conflicted and tortured and damaged. Oh, yo, what's good, Red? What's up, man? Welcome to the stream, my guy. He's seen a lot, he's been through a lot, but he still does what he's supposed to. Shadow might have this rough exterior, he might look cool, he might act cool, but at the inside, Shadow has a heart, a very big heart and a very big soul. Shadow's main purpose was to give humanity happiness and joy. Let them pursue their dreams and live life. Shadow sticks by that, even though he's not as outgoing and happy-go-lucky as Sonic. Shadow is Pathetic. He's a human, and therefore you connect to the character more. You care for him. You want him to succeed and do well. And although I stated that I think Shadow the Hedgehog should have stayed dead, I really wanted him to find himself. He just, that boy was feeling looking confused. I think they handled it. And it just ah. Uh... Him being confused just made me hurt a little bit. In a decent way, and it was still a really good arc for him. So when you have this fresh, hot, new character that has two successful character arcs and a giant, growing fan base, what do you do? You make a spinoff. Yes, now, sir. To this point, I have loved Shadow. I think he's a great character, if not the best Sonic the Hedgehog character ever. But what they did here ruined his character. They completely abandoned everything that they set up with Shadow previously in Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic Heroes. In the first cutscene, the very first cutscene they throw everything out of the window. First, Shadow in Sonic Adventure 2 realizes that he is supposed to be in the world to save humanity and protect them and give them help. Uh, the whole gimmick, evil versus hero, was... Ugh. It was such a gimmick, man! And it ruined his character! That was the main thing that... They just made it a regular campaign. They wouldn't have had to f force it to happen in the, uh, cuts, the storyline, too. See when they wanted then when they decided they wanted to have this whole hero versus re, uh renegade um gimmick they had to they had to write the plot around it and that just ruined his character. I don't know why they forced the the that gimmick on him. His character I went enjoy but here Nah, f them. Let them all perish. Screw them. You see those aliens falling out of the sky? Yeah, they don't matter. That's an everyday occurrence. You know, like when you're walking down to 7 Eleven and Shadow just sees them all the time. It's just another <laughs> Slurpee. day of aliens falling out of the sky and wreaking havoc on the city. Number two, Shadow seems to still be obsessed with who he is, even though in Sonic Heroes it was established that Shadow doesn't care who he is, he is who he says he is. They clearly weren't able to yep. come up with an intriguing story to build off of Sonic Heroes with, so they just brought back Amnesia because- I disagree. I don't think that's what it was. I think they just wanted to try and work off- I think they really just wanted to use that game, the whole uh, hero versus evil gimmick, and so they would have had to make the plot around that. So I think that's where it went wrong. I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't, I think they had, they could have come up with some other stuff pretty easily, but they just wanted that gimmick for whatever, whatever reason. Because, hey, it's easy. It ruins Shadow's character. It makes me angry. This game just pisses me off in every way. It created brand confusion. Yes. The fact that anybody thought this was a good idea and then pursued it. Where is that fourth Chaos Emerald? Pathetic humans. Where is that? <laughs> 
damn fourth chaos emerald. But ah, it never gets old. Something came along that created one of, if not the best shadow character arc in any Sonic game. Oh, that, 06? That being Sonic 06. I've never played no, 06. I am not joking. If you guys know wow. me, you know that Sonic 06 is not only my favorite Sonic game, but my favorite video game. We're not surprised. Okay, we can figure it out. We, we figured it out now. Okay. Ever. Now, I don't want to get too deep into why that is its own video, but I do want to state why Shadow of the Hedgehog has the best character arc in that game, and it has the best Shadow character arc ever. The okay, hit me. The Sonic 06 is Mephiles the Dark, and some people can argue that that was the last great Sonic the Hedgehog villain. He's great, he psychologically challenges all of the characters, makes them make hard decisions. He's just an agent of chaos. He's an entertaining villain, and he has a very close relationship with Shadow, in this game. Mm. Nephilus reveals that eventually humanity will turn on Shadow. As in this game, Shadow the Hedgehog has embraced humanity fully, working with them as he's now a member of GUN. As you can True. see by expressions and body language, Shadow is hurt by this. He does not like this whatsoever. It depresses him and makes him sad. Shadow in this game is empathetic, he cares for other people, he has friends, he works with others. I feel like a lot of people mistake Shadow's resting bitch face as just not caring, when that's not the case. He just has a resting pitch face. That's a good dude. <laughs> he hears his news. It does not rest well with him. But no matter how hard Mephiles tried to turn Shadow to the dark, Shadow says this. Why risk your life for those who will persecute you later? <laughs> I don't even... I, I haven't played this game, so I need to hear what he's going to say. The world chooses to become my enemy. I will fight like I always have. Shadow. Natural progression for Shadow's character, and is a lesson that everybody should take. You determine. That's Haku vibes right there. Your own destiny. They challenge Shadow the Hedgehog. The main yeah. Of Sonic Adventure 2 was Shadow not believing humanity and hating humanity and thinking that they were horrible people, but discovering. Wait, hold on. Determine your own destiny. They challenge. Sorry, I'm. I need to count the grains of sand. Okay, never mind, sorry. Hedgehog. The main thing with Sonic Adventure 2 was Shadow not believing humanity and hating humanity and thinking that they were horrible people, but discovering that they're good people and that he should work with them. So what happens when he discovers that humanity will turn on him and that they are evil people? It's character growth. It shows how far Shadow has come, and it shows his true character. Sonic 06 was the this last mainstream Sonic game to heavily feature Shadow. After this, Shadow wasn't in a main Sonic game until Sonic Generations, which was in 2011, but he didn't play as him, and nope. he just had one speaking line. Why is this? You got this, Why Sonic. Happened? Well, as we all know, Sonic 06 was not received well. Sega was doing some major reworking with Sonic the Hedgehog, trying to do something different. I can't stand colors. I, 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 I can't stand colors. It's not that it's a bad game. It's just, it's a bad Sonic game. I think it's a very solid game. Just a horrible Sonic game. You know what I mean? Very solid game, but not a good Sonic game. It abandoned everything Sonic. Ah, that's all I gotta say on Sonic Colors. And one of those things was making Sonic more kid-friendly and toning everything down. Shadow the Hedgehog is not very- Oh, Sonic Colors just feels like that game that, like, uh, sold the franchise's identity for mainstream, um, approval. Honestly, that's what it felt felt like. Very kid friendly, and he's not a very toned down character. He's not a quipper. He's not a jokester. And as I'm sure you guys can imagine, this change of writers and direction with Sonic has completely ruined the Shadow the Hedgehog character. Our first real glimpse into what a new Shadow the Hedgehog could look. Oh, like Oh, don't get me started on Boom Rise of Lyric Shadow. That is the worst one by far. The worst moment ever for Shadow the Hedgehog. Bro. He was in both the cartoon and the video games and was horrible. He was a schoolyard bully. He was a little punk. He was annoying. He was too cool for school and he didn't like anybody. Shadow being a villain at first and being a jerk is okay. That was what it was like in Sonic Adventure 2, but in Sonic Adventure 2, he had a backstory, a purpose, a reason for being the way he was, but in Sonic Boom, 
he's just thrown in there for fan service, but it's not fan service because they completely butcher the character. Shadow doesn't hate friends. He doesn't hate fun. He doesn't hate people. And if this so is what they want, so stupid and game, foolish. Whatever. Sonic Boom's dead. It's not a thing anymore. Good. Let's translate over. Bye, into Boom. Sonic. They translated perfectly. Shadow's next real appearance was in Sonic Forces, <sighs> in the main story, and his own DLC. Both were horrible depictions of the character, showing him as a too cool for school kind of guy. He's ruthless, he doesn't care about the well-being of others, he beats people up, he doesn't like interacting, he has no purpose in the story. And that's the thing, Shadow the Hedgehog needs a purpose. The best depictions of Shadow have story arcs with the character. He's not just thrown in there, he doesn't just have an adventure, he needs to have a purpose, he needs to have a reason for being there. And Sonic. As I said, unless you're going to make the plot very closely around Shadow and he's heavily involved, just make him playable in the post-game or just have him playable in the spin-offs. That's how you should handle Shadow going forward. Don't put him in the plot if he if if he's not a big part of it. Mike Forces didn't have that. This game didn't have the origin and realization of who Shadow the Hedgehog really was. It didn't have Shadow coming to terms with the fact that he doesn't know who he is, but he doesn't care who he is. He is who he says he is. It's not a game where Shadow the Hedgehog faces the fact that humanity will turn on him and that he will determine his own destiny. No, this is just Shadow the Hedgehog beating people up. He's a lackey. He's a goon. He's not an instrument. In I did like this. Uh, to be fair, I did like this scene when I first played Forces. It was it was really good. Um, But yeah, he's still right. And it didn't stop there. Team Sonic Racing released two years later, and Shadow the Hedgehog was once again ruined. Once again, just being depicted as an annoying, jealous, egotistical asshole. I have no idea why Sega did this. And yes, Sega did this. Apparently, Shadow the Hedgehog is not allowed to have any kind of character or relationships with anybody, not even Rouge or Omega. No romantic or platonic relationships, no. Shadow the Hedgehog is just a blank piece of paper. He is nobody anymore. The Shadow the Hedgehog that we once knew is dead. Somebody who was once the greatest Sonic the Hedgehog character of all time, who saved the universe, who sacrificed himself, who went on an internal struggle and journey to discover who he was, is now just a schoolyard bully who doesn't care about anything. Many fans' favorite character no longer represents what he used to represent. He has been turned into a one-note stereotype. Even places where there can be good storytelling with these characters have completely killed Shadow as well. The IDW comics are great, but if there's one thing that's wrong with them, of course it has to be Shadow because of the stupid mandate Sega has in place. What used to be the greatest Sonic the Hedgehog character of all time has now been reduced to a passive egotistical jerk. Maybe one day things can go back to the way things were. But for right now, all I have to say is Zayanara. Shadow, the, Shadow Hedgehog. the Hedgehog. <sighs> oh, that was depressing. Oh, thank you, Sega and Sonic Team. Oh, I'm gonna miss you, good old Shadow.